Cosmic Eclipse singles continue to be super low, so maybe now's the time to create your IRL deck. Charizard, Shiny Charizard has finally hit that predicted $200 mark, and we're going to take a look at how the PSA 10 version is doing. This is Pokemart. What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and welcome to another episode of Pokemart where we kind of look at the secondary market for Pokemon cards. And today we're actually going to start with Trevenant Dust Noir. We've mentioned this a couple times, especially when there were some good deals on this box. And I'm going to say it's still looking like a pretty good deal and to be honest I'm a little surprised. I feel like on PTCGO I run, I've been running into some Nuzguz but less Trevenant Dust Noir. You know just comparing the two strategies uh, Nuzguz feels like it just has one less step and so maybe it's a little bit more consistent despite the fact that Night March is still a very strong attack while being able to discard two of your opponent's cards. But on DCG player is still maintaining over $10 a card which is pretty good. And then when we go to eBay. Um, so I just clicked this one because I just saw this was the most recently sold box and it's actually on sale for $16.18 shipped. So if you just buy this cart, uh, buy this box for $16 shipped and people are still selling the promo itself on eBay for $10.50. Yeah, there's a couple that are cheaper. This one was seven, uh, but not only that, or not only can you possibly sell the promo for $10 or people will still buy it for $10, the jumbo card is still going for $5, which is very surprising. And the code card is still going for six. So right there, you know, in a way you can get, you know, over $20 uh, out of a box that you can still buy for $16 and that's ignoring the four packs in the box and uh, I believe it does come with two unified minds so there's still even more potential for these things so I'm maintaining this thing is a very good buy if you can find it especially at those like target deals where you spend a certain amount you save whatever uh, use leverage those promotions a very good buy still to this day all right moving on to cosmic eclipse yeah, these prices are still super low. We're going to look at max rarity stuff, guys, but if you ever considered making a deck, uh, Cosmic Eclipse singles uh, might be or might be low enough where it's reasonable to put together a IRL deck, especially one that's revolved around CEC cards. So still at the top of the list is Charizard Breaks and coming in 3870, but I believe that is for a light played one. So if you want a near mint one, it'll be a little bit more, but still kind of like mid, upper mid to upper 40s. Actually, probably upper 40s is probably the more accurate way to say the uh, for that's for near mint. And uh, you know, I feel like this is just like the Charizard effect, the rainbow Charizard effect, where it started off high and it's constantly going down. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if this is still not the bottom, uh, especially since to be honest, this card has not performed that well. So I feel like it's primarily the Charizard effect. And uh, if we take a look at eBay, so let's see how on eBay's if you want to pick one up now, you can still pick one up for 55 60. So it seems like eBay buy it now is significantly higher compared to TCG player. Let's take a look at some, and I'm very curious as to why what could cause something like that to happen. We go to sold listings, kind of like that same story 75 55 60 uh, compared to TCG player, which is significantly less. So I have a predict or a guess at why that might be the case, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So, um, yeah, Charizard breaks and continue to go down. I think last time we took a look at this was around 60. Uh, moving on to Hidden Fates. Actually, I do want to hit one more thing about Cosmic Eclipse. Um, yeah, so the supporters that, you know, I think that that could remain useful post Sword and Shield. Um, and I wonder if that's what's kind of keeping these a little bit higher compared to things like Tag Call. Um, which have GX, which things that say uh, GX or tag team, if those you know are falling off a little bit because they will not have much of a place in Sword and Shield, where V cards are not GX cards or tag team cards, obviously. But however, these ones are not affected by that. Uh, but then back to you know, if you can ever thought about putting together IRL deck, for example, like ADP is very popular still. Uh, you could pick these up for ten dollars and. Um, 
you know, Bundle B, I feel like, is a one of in a lot of decks you pick for eight. If you want to try to try to make Reshi Round work uh, for, you know, less than eight dollars a pop, not bad. Charizard breaks in six. So if you ever thought about putting in a deck, especially around CEC cards, you know, now might be a good time to do so. All right, let's go to Hidden Fates. And yes, <laughs> it's happened, guys. Just like we predicted, Charizard has hit that $200 mark. Uh, so I... One thing I think one day I looked at it was actually 190, and I wonder if this was the effect of that Black Friday deal where, um, you know, for the first time ever you could pick up those tins for ten dollars, which creates a price point or a per pack price of 250, which is by far lowest we've ever seen. And I wonder if that kind of added a bunch of or added some number of Charizards to the supply, and as a result, the price went a little bit lower. And now that we have hit this $200 mark, although there's only two here, um, I wonder if because of once that extra amount of supply kind of dries up, and then we'll kind of either go up a little bit or stay around this $200 mark for excuse me a good while. So if I had to guess, uh, we're not going any further down anytime soon, if ever. It wouldn't even surprise me if we it goes back up a little bit. Um, however, we have hit that $200 mark. And one thing I will say, though, is I bet this Hidden Fates will be on shelves in the Walmarts and Targets uh, for another year, years, uh, another few years would not shock me. Let's go to eBay for our shiny dragon friend uh always make sure you take a look at the listing this thing says full metal a uh, metal card uh when you say oh 99 dollars that's a crazy good deal nope um so always be careful uh so let's see we don't want other cards but yeah 240 and this is once again where it seems like the ebay especially on the buy it now listings are significantly higher compared to the tcg listings and so I have a couple thoughts around that, but yeah, for currently buy it now, significantly higher. Let's take a look at sold listings throughout eBay. And while there are a couple deals, we saw one or 150, uh, but I would say on like on average, the listings, the sold listings are above $200. So we have a 228 here. Uh, that's, that's a graded one. Uh, 190. All right, so there are a couple. 225. This one's 300. Best offer says I bet it's around like two, uh, mid 200, something like that. Uh, 230. And occasionally, yes, there are super cheap ones, and this would be a pretty good thing to pick up. But then we have more at 225. Uh, so if I had to guess, and I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts about this, uh, but uh, if we look at TCG player, especially when a lot of them, you know, these, they're basically uh, some it's like a small company kind of thing you know this thing is almost 10,000 cards sold is like if they want to move cards and they want to recoup some capital it's like all right we'll just put it at the lowest price and it'll go uh, that kind of makes sense and just to kind of recoup some stuff to potentially get some other products um, and I feel like that's the case for a lot of these big vendors uh, compared to these smaller ones which like we'll look at this one for 727 sales uh, this 250, you know what? We're leaving at this 250. If it doesn't sell, that's not the end of the world. And then we compare that to potentially a lot of eBay sellers. Obviously, it doesn't apply to all of them. Uh, but you know, if these are just people that crack open packs, of, oh wow, I got Charizard, I want to sell it for that. You know, oh, I heard it went for ten thousand dollars. This thing's worth a lot. I'm going to sell it for five hundred. And therefore, you know, people aren't willing to go to the price where it'll just move instantly. Therefore, like eBay in general, have higher. Uh, listings compared to TCG player um, Again, that's if I had to venture a guess that would be my own thought and uh, Let's go to Cynthia. I think on TCG player still around upper 30 and um, So this is kind of more in line what you I feel like we would expect where eBay is a little bit cheaper So we have some 30s in there. So we still have some mid to 30s, but lower end is not surprising I think I saw a 20 at some point. Yeah, even mid 20s for Cynthia, which I feel like it's a pretty good price. So Cynthia kind of following what I would expect. So my guess is that eBay sellers or a handful of eBay sellers is, you know, I don't want to sell it for 200. This thing is worth more than that. All right, let's take a look at PSA Shiny Zard. I feel like there's some interesting stuff going on here. So right now, basically the pop report we can only get from, or I can only find it on the PSA website. And so of 500 Charizards that have been graded, 382 or 83 of them have been tens compared to 102 nine. So we're getting close to a four to one ratio between 10 and nine, which is very, um, it's a pretty 
you know, the print quality is a super high, so many tens. Uh, so I feel like this, you know, um, maybe this has happened before, but I can't think of a situation, I'm not aware of one where it's such a crazy ratio. Uh, I feel like at this point is, if you get a nine, it's like, oh man, you know, you probably, you probably just didn't notice that it was slightly off-centered. If you got an eight, it's like, oh, that one, maybe that's on you for sending that in. And these ones are pretty, I don't know, someone sent in damage cards for whatever reason, but it seems like getting a 10 is very, is not that difficult to do. And uh, I want to think about, all right, what do we, what kind of conclusion, what kind of speculations can we make based on this information when it comes to what, how the PSA 10 will kind of like do down the road? When we try to take a look at how things have been recently, so recent sellings, sold PSA 10 cards, 500, 600, another five so it's kind of like anywhere between five to seven hundred we're gonna stay away from BGS and let's see where's another one? 600 600 a uh, little bit higher than 600 so it seems like you know below 600 is maybe where the average are but they do go higher um, but some of them are as low as 500 I think there's one cheaper uh, which wasn't too long ago I think it was like 400 something and let's compare that to a couple other Charizards that uh, that are still pretty modern. And the first one we're gonna look at is Reshizard. So, a couple key differences is this was not the first Rainbow Charizard, or which is you know at the time the max rarity for this card. And the for the pop report, more tens than nines. So not to the degree of shiny Charizard, but nonetheless, um, more tens than nines. So it's not the mo most difficult thing to grade. And if we look at the, the sales price history, it's been a steady decline since June, which maybe that's when Unbroken Bonds came out. So a nonstop road down from 700 all the way down to 230. I think one of our earlier episodes of Pokemart, Rishizard, the raw card was going for $200, and now you can pick up the PSA 10 for not too much more. So that's really insane, crazy price drop. And I feel like this is a perfect example. This is just the Charizard effect. You know, there's so much hype around it, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, I can flip this card. You know, it's not a great collector's item because it's not the first rainbow it is the first tag team but tag team is cool but maybe it's not going to go down as something that uh, makes it makes a card a good collectible and then again there's that PSA grading uh, the pop report side more PSA 10s than PSA 9s let's take a look at at the first rainbow Charizard the OG rainbow Charizard from burning shadows and take a look at the pop report this one is the other way around uh, so slightly less tens compared to PSA 9, it's almost 100, 100 difference. Uh, so let's take a look at how that one has done over the years. And this one has been kind of a steady increase. Uh, we take a look at, you know, 2017, uh, anywhere between, actually it seems like it went down for quite a period of time. Um, and then, you know, anywhere from 300 to 500 to now where they're getting close to six to $800. So this one is a positive trend, and so, all right, let's let's take a look at some 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 details. It's the first the first one, uh, and the it's more difficult to grade. Uh, while I do believe you can still pick up Burning Shadow stuff, and it'll be a little bit more expensive by now. So and it's so at this point it's kind of an old card. It's rotated and all that, um, but so I feel like Shiny Charizard could be somewhere in the middle. So on the con side, it's very easy to grade. There's gonna be so many PSA 10s, especially compared to PSA 9s. Uh, but I do think that kind of means that, well, you know, I'm definitely not gonna sell for nine. I'm definitely going for the 10. And however on the, so definitely the fact that it's easy to grade makes it less rare, I guess. Uh, but then if actually just one other detail is they're already getting close to 400 10s of the Burning Shadow Charizard, and for Hidden Fates, something that you can still buy now and probably can buy for the next two years easily. There's already 400 of them. So the, the amount of PSA 10s is probably gonna go through the roof, which isn't great for if you want to, uh, for the price to go up. But then on the other side, let's talk about some things that might help it out, is that the price per pack for Hidden Fates is just straight up higher than 
other sets like uh, Unbroken Bonds or Burning Shadows, where for the longest time it was $5 per pack, uh, MSRP, and then for that Black, it took Black Friday to get it to half that, which, you know, yes, that was a super good deal and definitely put out a lot of cards into the market or into the supply. Um, but I doubt we're going to see that very often. You know, obviously you do see the other promotions that will bring it down. Um, but I think the kind of like the MSRP will be back at five dollars uh, for a good while. And so just the fact that it costs more to pull it um, obviously will help it out as well as as um, for the graded card. So, you know, if I had to guess, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, but I do think it is kind of. It's interesting because it's a straight up reprint of the Burning Shadows Charizard, but it's shiny. And especially as long as they don't over dilute this shiny thing, you know, that uh, they don't continually push the shiny thing. As long as Hidden Fates remains a unique thing where all these shiny Pokemon, even though you did have shiny Legends or shiny GX Pokemon, let's leave it at that. Um, you know, I think it'll definitely help it. So. Yeah, that's what my thoughts are as far as how we can speculate for the PSA 10 Chinese Charizard. But uh, yeah, let me know what your own thoughts below. What is your prediction for the PSA 10 Chinese Charizard? And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. As always, uh, if there's topics you would like to see covered on an episode of Pokemon, let me know in a comment down below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe all down below. I'm a, I'm a Wanna Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.